Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Pixel Logic stream. My name is Ian Robinson. I am a ZBrush trainer here at Maxon, and we do fun stuff in ZBrush. Hopefully, everybody's doing well. What's up, Chase? Welcome in. Welcome. Uh, so today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hopefully tidying up this project. We've been working on the Demig Organ for a little bit while. Uh, it's just a fan art piece, but today we're going to do some texturing. And as well as we're going to be doing, uh, at least the plan is to do some slime uh, effects or drool effects. Some really cool stuff. So we're going to try a few things and just play around and see what's going on. So if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, all that good stuff. But hopefully everybody's having a great time. Hopefully they're having a good week. But let's go ahead and take a look. So some updates have occurred since the last time I streamed. Um, I went ahead and played with... Uh, adding the base a little bit more getting the tentacles in which i can cover how i did that it was just literally using the uh curve uh, tubes brush with some modifiers and we're going to also end up texturing those as well what's cool about this piece is that the base itself doesn't really have to be super complex but we can basically uh have enough information there that says that this is a little bit out of this world so as always don't feel uh don't um hesitate to ask any questions but let's go ahead and do it yeah we're gonna do the slime this can be fun i have a few techniques i've been playing with uh but we're also gonna kind of like there's a there's a lot of ways you can do it and you could do one strand at a time but the way i want to try it is actually going to be using uh dynamic cloth as part of it so daisuke <laughs> what's up welcome how you doing good to have you here man Daisuke is also a streamer here and works as well. So, you know, say hi to him. Say what's up. You're on. He's on every Thursday, I believe. If I have that right. Well, you're on twice, I think. But anyway, let's get into it. So I went ahead and let's cover how I did the tentacle parts first. Let's go ahead and just kind of select this. So this is just a curves to brush. So basically what I did was uh, let's go B, C, and then let's grab the curve two. And then we're gonna go up to stroke. We're gonna go to curve, not curve, there we go. And I actually turned off repel and I turned off the repel strength. And then the other thing that I did was under uh, curve modifiers, we turned on size. And I actually flipped this with the FV flip. You can kind of see that right there. And then I actually adjusted this area right here to kind of give me a little bit of a interesting shape. And then the last thing I did, because right now if I draw this, you can see here kind of it's doing its own thing, which can be cool in some regards, but I wanted it to interact with the rest of the environment. And it doesn't quite do that when I just draw it out. So I went up to picker and under the depth tab there's continuous z change that and now when i draw it's going to engage and interact with the rest of the scene so depending on how i draw that it's going to go ahead and recognize because it's continuously updating where the brush is and the mesh underneath it so it's it's always kind of uh updating the surface and then i can adjust each one as possible yep thursday is correct we so that's how i did a lot of this um, and then now I'm just going to go ahead and start manipulating each one of these. So we're actually going to go ahead and go up to brush. I'm going to go up to auto masking and turn on topological, which will allow me to get a bigger brush and move some of these tentacles um, out of the way because it's utilizing auto groups. So we're just going to kind of adjust this a bit so that they're all kind of playing around. And we'll end up doing some texture and stuff too. I'm going to be sh uh, demonstrating the layer brush today. So if anybody's just familiar or would like to learn the layer brush, today is the day. Going to do some fun stuff. Let's kick that underneath. This way I can just kind of grab, grab a piece. This is all very low poly right now too. All right. Let's do it. Boop, boop. And what's really neat about this base in particular, something I've been enjoying a lot, is that this this underneath is going to be uh, is just dirt. We're going to paint it too. I think we, I think we should have some color, but underneath is just kind of like a dirt substance. So we can have the tentacles kind of clipping in a little bit, 
right? And then we can actually, you know, sculpt the dirt just a little bit more so that shows or looks like it's actually engaging with with the environment. It's not just sitting on top. Bring a little bit more dynamic uh, to the piece. Makes it a little bit more dynamic. So let's do that, something like that. All right. I think that's looking pretty good. What I am looking for is just any interactions uh, that don't make sense, any clipping that doesn't make any sense. So like here we can actually, let's actually grab this guy right here. We can push this in a little bit. So it makes just a bit more sense. There we go, something like that. Okay, this part right here. This part right here looks really weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that move brush and we're gonna actually going to push that underneath just a bit. And let's engage it with that dirt as well. And we'll go through and we'll sculpt up a lot of the spots there. So again, just kind of making sure that everything looks and feels correct before we add any texturing. You don't want to texture on top of something that doesn't look right. Hmm. Curious. Oh, right there. Perfect. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and make a texture brush that we're going to use for both the Demogorgon and we're going to use it for these guys here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and subdivide up. Good. Dynamics not turned on. We'll subdivide a few times, get at least to a mill or two. And now let's go ahead and make a brush that's going to be functional. So let's go ahead and save this. Is everybody caught up with uh, Stranger Things? <laughs> All right, let's go B, L, and let's grab the layer brush. So the layer brush is really, really neat. If you've never used it, what's cool about it is that it, it basically adds a layer of material and either positively or negatively, but it has like a self-adjustment. So it's kind of like it's kind of like how thick skin functions. But what's neat is we're gonna change the alpha to something more like alpha 60. And we're gonna set this to sub. And we'll set the intensity up. And then we're gonna go with like a little bit of a scatter. You can start kind of building this area up just a little bit. Maybe you go a little bit bigger. Yeah. Do we want this one or maybe something more? Ooh, that looks really cool. That looks a lot cooler. Let's go with Alpha 22. That actually looks really good. What's up? Hello, Casey. Hello, hello. There we go. So you can see here, we can add some pretty neat effects real quickly. Now, what I'm gonna do before I add all the texturing, I like to use layers for this. So we're gonna go to, we're on the highest subdivision level so far. So we're on subdivision level four, which is about 3.3 .3 million, not too crazy. We're gonna go to layers and we're gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna stop the recording process and rename it and call this uh, skin texture. And I like to go through layers for this. I don't like to use, I don't like to sculpt right on the mesh. It's a little destructive. So I go with the layer so I can always just kind of wipe it when I'm done. What's up, Brandy? Hello, hello. Cog, hello. Welcome in, welcome in. And actually, let's do some, let's do something fun. Let's add some color to this. So let's turn on color and the RGB intensity. Let's go up a little bit and let's get like a deep red because we want to kind of bring in some of that. Just a little bit of a color difference. I think that'd be fun. Okay. Something subtle. Then we'll use the same technique to add some kind of like wounds or gashes to.
Something like that. Change the size a little bit. Give the arms a little bit different of a texture. Kind of bear, giving it a little bit of variety. Now I'm noticing too, I'm getting a little bit of uh, back face happening. So let's go to brush auto masking just to turn off back face so that we don't get any weird geometry pushes. And what's neat about working with layers as well is that you're able to um, sculpt, continue sculpting, turn off the layer, and then bring that layer back when you're ready. Hello, Kimi and Karia. Hopefully I said that right. Welcome in, welcome in. How are you guys doing? Welcome, if you've never been here. My name's Ian. We do a lot of sculpting in ZBrush, a lot of teaching in ZBrush. So if you guys have questions, let me know. The other thing too, when you're texturing, especially something like a creature, it's really beneficial to just kind of like pull away and look at the model and see how it's, how those textures are coming through. This creature is a little bit out of the realistic realm as it doesn't exist. So we could play with our own little thoughts on it. You add a little something, something. going to be really really cool so i'm going to show you a technique to push these textures a little bit harder too this material is just a little bright um let's do this let's go to material let's put this over here modifiers and let's turn the font down a little bit reflection exposure a little bit of gamma. Turn the specular down just a little bit. There we go. That's a bit better. Let's actually go to go to render. Let's go to render properties and let's turn on that wax because this is a waxy kind of material. Uh, I've been studying anatomy. I've been sculpting for about seven years now, and I've been studying anatomy heavily for the past, I want to say, four or five years. What I love about anatomy is there's always something to learn. Hello, oh, Chris. Yeah, I'm I'm actually always studying anatomy. It's never it's never a process where I'm like, yep, I'm done. I'm done today. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where you should always be studying and updating. And also too, not just human anatomy, but it it's good to uh study animal anatomy, insect anatomy. Everything has anatomy, which is neat, right? So you can always I mean, if you if you really want to trip out, look at how a tree grows. The way the branches, if you look at a leaf and you see the way the, the, the stems of the leaf branch out to create the leaf, that almost mirror that almost mirrors the tree itself. Which is really cool. So there's always something that's neat. Uh, I actually work at Maxon, um, and I'm on the ZBrush development, uh, or the ZBrush team, where I train and teach, and uh, and help people learn ZBrush. So I work at Maxon. I come from, my background actually comes from the toy world and 3D printing. So I used to work at uh, Funko, and um, I did a lot of freelance work prior to that. I first got my start actually in the film industry where I was sculpting uh, little props and toy assets for prop masters to bring on set, which is how I ended up getting my start. And it's crazy because like that started off with a very basic tentacle vi game. It was very simplistic. It was really just like fun. And then it turned into, well, it turned into 
me teaching, so. <laughs> sure, you could call it a more structural, uh, yeah, you could call it that. I think it's a little, I think it's uh, more just indifferent. If you, uh, if you talk to, um, if you talk to some architects, um, a buddy of mine does it and he always refers to his buildings as anatomy. I think that's cool. Right, I'm just going to take a peek at that for a second. I always like to look at my models again from afar just to kind of see if that color is actually working for me, if the textures are working. Hit areas, you can always, when you're super up close, you can always notice weird imperfections, but when you back off, you can really notice the bigger picture. Wait, what's up, Ray? Welcome in, welcome in. As a pro, do you feel intimidated while working with some of the great artists? Uh, sometimes, yeah, you know, because I, I'd never, I don't consider myself to be the best of the best. I consider myself to be um, striving to be better than I was yesterday. Um, there are a ton of amazing artists out there. So it's sometimes intimidating, but it's also kind of an honor to be able to work closely with a lot of talented people and just be a part of something that's larger than myself, you know? I got into this for just making, I just wanted to make things for people to enjoy. I wanted somebody to look at something and be like, hey, that's really cool and that makes me happy. Sometimes it's just that simple. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still gonna be working on this a bit more. Okay, so we got this pretty well base texture. So we're gonna go ahead and stop that recording process Okay. And then if I wanted to make this texture pop just a little bit more, I don't currently, but I want to cover that real quick. If I wanted to make this texture pop a little bit more, what you could do is you could end up ultimately baking this layer and creating a new layer that you then smooth all of the texture you just applied. So we'll do it really quickly so you can see it. So let's say that's all the area. Then you hit you stop the record process and you slide the layer back into a negative direction that actually pushes that texture even further. So if you go back to zero, that's essentially where we are and then going negatively actually pushes it even further than that. So that's a really great way to go ahead and get more texture than just simply going over and over and over again. So creating layers is a really good way to do that. Plus two, like I said, we can continue sculpting on this uh, on this base with our textures underneath. We can just turn it off and then we can start sculpting a little bit more and then we can turn it back on when we're ready and see those in real time apply. So it's that's a neat way to work with layers. It's like human meat. <laughs> uh, I actually, you know what? I don't know yet. I don't know how big I want to print it. Um, I wanna, I wanted a decent size, so maybe, maybe like one six scale. We'll start there, and then we'll see how well it is. Um, it would be cool as a mini as well, for anybody who wanted to use this piece um, for their demogorgon. Anybody plays D and D? Okay, let's go ahead and actually turn that light back on. And we'll continue. I found a spot I didn't like. We need to touch it. Whoops, go solo for a second. There we go. Okay. Let's actually work a little bit on his feet. So I'm gonna stop this recording and turn this off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the clay build it brush, which is BCB. And then we're actually going to go ahead and add alpha 18, which is a nice, a nice little alpha that helps me with a little bit more of a softer natural buildup. And we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of wrinkles in his foot. Kind of hone down those details. 
And I actually want to gouge him a little bit. I want to cut his body up a little bit. He's too clean for what he is. I'm good at creating layers and then forgetting I have to... <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. Hello, hello, welcome in. A message says I can't, uh, pops up and says I can't sculpt because layers are turned on when I try to sculpt in their layers. Uh, hide the layer. So um, if you see it there, there's a little eye next to the record. If it's turned on, you're going to get that. Just go ahead and hide that layer. And then from there, start working with your original mesh. And then when you're ready, turn that back on and that texture is still there. And that will solve your problem. The other thing to remember too is that you want to you want to make sure that when you are working with with your when you are starting the texture and layer you want to keep it to that subdivision you don't want to like work on subdivision level four and then step up a couple um, subdivisions and add another layer that, that can get a little weird you might get some res funky results so before you start using layers, I highly recommend just step it up to like a subdivision that makes the most sense and that will capture your texturing the best. So for me, that's like around 3.3 million. That's fine for what I'm going for. And then start uh, start using layers. That way it keeps it nice and tidy too. Yep, oh, you got it, cool. Awesome. Okay. So I actually do want to start kind of cutting into them a little bit. And that's where we're going to go back to the layer brush. So B, L, and A. But we're going to go back to kind of a different alpha now. We're going to go, because I want to cut into them a bit. So let's play with alpha 8. And let's actually, let's turn, actually, you know what? Let's just, let's go back to alpha 1. Yeah, that would be good. And let's go back to just dots. That intensity. There we go. Okay. Really, do we want to do that? Mm. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, let's do that, but we're going to go with a deeper red color for this. I'm going to turn the intensity down just a little bit and the coloring down. And I'm also going to apply a focal shift. Yeah, that's going to look good. So we're going to basically be creating a wound. So the colors will will every stroke you apply is going to reapply that color. And this is really cool if you're trying to get like a gaping hole or a kind of like, you know, a bullet shot almost, right? Is uh, a bullet wound or a knife wound um, because that color is going to stack and blend on each other. And then what that will do is that will generate a nice fade effect. So I'm actually going to be adding a little bit of cuts and I can work that and get that kind of natural, deep look. You use the pen pressure just a bit. Get something like that. And that color is gonna help apply that just a bit too, so. There's always a noise because they seem to get in the way. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely understand that. Yeah. Well, glad that helps out. I love using layers when it comes to texturing. That's my whole texture pipeline. Just turn on layers. Because then, too, let's say you do all this work. Like, let's say I turn this back on, and I ultimately don't like it, right? I'm not stuck with that. I don't have to worry about if I lose history, none of that. I could just turn that off and... I can test it. I control Z, control shift Z to turn it on and off. It's control Z actionable. So I'm able to even go further and just be like, do I like that? Do I not like that? Turn it on, turn it off. It's nice.
what we'll do with this too is in some areas we'll go a little bit a little bit more subtle and if you hit one on the keyboard it repeats that action right so you can get some effects like that and we can start just kind of applying how this looks go through this whole process nice and loosey-goosey and if you're cutting in too much just drop that intensity and you can utilize the the paint a little bit more oh yeah good 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 <laughs> i try i try to bring those little nuggets here and there you know i try That's the easiest way to get just a little bit of cuts and wounds and gaping, little holes, scratches. Hey, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's my uh, it's my take it's it's my fan art take on it. It's I've still held to the designs uh, the overall design of the show, but ultimately wanted to kind of do my own little spin on the matter. So let's drop that intensity a bit. I do have some texture reference I do want to pull up real quick. I really like what they did in the show. It was really awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, really just emphasized this creature's grittiness. So anytime there's a little bit of a, a, a muscle cut or a connection to kind of really just dive in on that. Go a little bit more than this. Let's increase that intensity. Back that up just a little bit. Again, kind of looking back at it from back here, it's starting to starting to come together, which I like. I'm also going to go ahead and kind of capture the original color so that if I cut too deep, I can actually just hold alt and bring back some of that that design and that also adds another layer of of texturing to it. Something you don't you don't necessarily want to be smoothing a whole lot. It's nice sometimes to have the brushes, natural texturing effects because then it just kind of yeah, looks a little bit more neat, realistic. Gives it gives it just something, a little some something. Let's go back. Or 
carpet. What I'm going to do as well here real quick. Because I do want a kind of a red hue on them, but not too much. Let's go up to Z plugin. Let's go to ambient occlusion. And we're actually going to run the plugin for ambient occlusion, which will give us something a little nice and a little bit more natural. And I'm also going to correct his pose a little bit. His fingers are bothering me. There's uh, something I need to add to that. So we're going to go ahead and invert that and then hold control H or press control H, that's gonna hide the mask, but the mask is still there. And then I'm going to, with a very low RGB intensity, we're gonna go to color, and we're gonna slightly fill this with a little bit of red, okay? So we don't have to paint everything by hand. Let's back that up just a bit. There we go. Now we can focus on some of the other areas. It does look kind of, <laughs> I do like that kind of bluish tint. Although that is just the material um, that I have, that I built for him. This is his, the current material. I have a material that I'm building to release actually for um, for our newsletter that's coming out soon. Um, calling it Waxy Blue. Uh, and if you, and all you have to do is go to preference, uh, go up to render and turn on wax preview. Cause this is the original color, how it looks. That wax preview gives you a little bit more of that kind of SS feel. Hell Knight, how you doing? Welcome in, welcome in. Now we're going to go ahead and exaggerate some of the areas that I would like with this layer brush. Again, it's just applying that kind of cool texture. And then at any point in time too, if I'm like, yeah, hey, let's create like a wound. Let's create kind of a big gaping wound on his leg here, like a chunk's been removed. Let's actually go up, let's drop up that, let's get that RGB back up just a little bit. Give him a little bit more of a gash here. Get that kind of fleshy tear. Come in. Something like that. How would I move an object's pivot point to the center of the world while keeping the object where it is? Yeah, nice. Okay. Um, so let's actually flip this over here. So you want to move the entire object to the center of the world while keeping the object. We mean keeping the object where it is. If you're just talking about like, if you want to change the pivot point, on the gizmo, all you need to do is hold alt and you can freely move the gizmo wherever you would like. So if the object, if I would like to change the pivot point of the character by his foot, I'll hold alt and I will align the gizmo here. And now I can pivot by the foot. If I would like to pivot from his head, I just hold alt and I, while holding alt position that, and then I can move it from that spot. If that's what you mean, I can also hold alt and reset to the center of the object. And then if I would like to move the entire object to the center of the world, the best way I recommend doing it, actually, all you really need to do, and I use this, I use transpose a lot for this, is that I end up just ultimately, if I would like to move everything, meaning I have multiple sub tools, I'd actually go up to transpose master and send it into trans to T pose mesh like this. One second. There you go. And then I recenter the gizmo by holding alt and hit this little world icon. And then I will hit the home button, which recenters the entire object to the center of the world. 
and then you end up sending that back by going up back to plugin transpose and t and uh, t post that will send everything back but it keeps the monster right where it's at Uh, completely new. Don't know if you're doing questions, but how different is sculpting in ZBrush to other programs like, let's say, Blender? Uh, what are the pros and cons is what you're trying to ask. Well, first things first, welcome in. This is actually the best source for you to get all of the answers for ZBrush. So ZBrush is the lead industry sculpting program in a lot of industries from jewelry to video games to film to VFX, to medical illustration. Um, it's in the toys world, it's in the collectibles world. So there, so it's everywhere. So the incentive to learn ZBrush is very high because most industries utilize it. The biggest component is the ability to work with very high dense mesh that allows you to have 20, 30, 50, 80 million vertices within the program and it can still handle it no problem. Um, other programs have a harder time with dense mesh here you're able to base pretty much create anything from a sphere that you want. There's no limitations here. So if you're trying to create something, you're not going to be just limited by, oh, this program only really works well at 5 million or 10 million because at 20 million it starts to crash. Because ZBrush views uh, the mesh differently than most 3D programs. Uh, ZBrush started as a painting program in which you can also utilize some of the sketching features within ZBrush to even 2D sketch some designs. So uh, there's a lot of applications built into it and most industries use it. So that's that's the big, the big pro for it. Um, honestly, as far as cons go, I, what I would have to say with that is that you're gonna get used to working with high mesh, high dense mesh and sending it over to other programs might, you'll, you'll have to learn some, some ways to drag them, uh, to, to uh, optimize the mesh. So, you know, if you have a 30 or 40 million poly sculpt, you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, decimate that down, which we actually have that ability to do that within ZBrush, where we have Decimation Master. That allows you to take that high mesh and bring it down so other programs can look at it fairly easy. We also have Zebra Mesher, so you can actually optimize the mesh itself with a click of a button. So you can optimize it by saying zero mesh and then from there project those details back. So there's a lot of different ways to do it and every artist does things a bit differently. I work mostly asymmetrically because I work with statues and toys primarily, that's my background. So that's how I use ZBrush, but there's a lot of ways to go ahead and do that. So we also do have the best community as ISK says, absolutely. Because we, ZBrush Live, this channel is going on every day. There's not a day this channel doesn't go live at some point in time. So if you sub to their Twitch or our YouTube, then you're pretty much going to have some artist on here, like myself, Daisuke, or you know Shane Olson, Anne Carolina, Mike Thompson. They're artists in the industry helping pass the knowledge essentially for free. So yeah. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers your question. But yes, uh, there is definitely... We, there's a lot here, for sure. Make that intensity back up. There we go. Um, so that's how you... Yeah, not a problem. Hey, Emperor of Cheese! What's happening? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm ranting. <laughs> Oh, that's why. I have the wrong color selected. That's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and switch that. I hit a button. Ian be hitting buttons. And I'm on every Wednesday at this time from uh, 12 to 2 Pacific Standard Time. So in your learning of ZBrush, you can definitely, uh, you could definitely pop on here and ask your questions. And while we're on that topic, let me introduce something... Um, a project that I'm a part of. So this is for everybody who's trying to get started or learn ZBrush. If you go to YouTube, I want you to type in Ask ZBrush, all one word. And I'm gonna share the link. But anytime you have a question about ZBrush and you're like, hey, how do I do this thing in ZBrush? Oh, I wanna know what Dynamesh is. Ask ZBrush, Dynamesh, what is it? What is that? Ask ZBrush, we've been working on Ask ZBrush videos to give to the community for over 
eight, nine years. We Seabrush was made in 1998. So for over, maybe even longer, maybe I want to say seven years, we have pretty much anything uh, that you can learn about the program on our YouTube channel. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share that as well and also let you know when we go live. What's up, Ryan? Woo -hoo! Thanks, man. Yeah, Sculpt's coming along. We're actually texturing today, and we're going to try to get to some saliva work. So um, you can go to the Ask ZBrush and our YouTube link there. But also we do have a thing called Z Classroom, which there is a project right here, how to start in ZBrush. And the uh, this is, we're in the process of updating this. This has been around for a while, but it's still very relevant. So if you wanted to get started in ZBrush right now, and you want to follow a project and make this little this little uh, um, project boy here, this little shark boy, start to finish, it takes you through, watch you through, and they're not too big. 14 videos, 17 minutes is like the the longest video here, and you can and that's just showing you techniques and then they apply it. So there's also this project as well. I highly recommend checking it out. And this is free, by the way. You just go there and you, you just start learning. There's no sign in for that. So if you have ZBrush, definitely go there. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know. I was not, uh, I was not sculpted. In 1998, I was a junior. It was a, no, I was a sophomore in high school. I was <laughs> I don't even I don't even know like I actually would love to go back and see if I could find the first version of ZBrush That would be really really cool Hey Omicron hello welcome in welcome in is there also a link to the resource center where you can get alphas and Mac? Absolutely. Actually, yeah. So if you go, um, let's actually go back here. So if we go to our support, oops, hold on one second. Let's quit that for a second. Refresh. There we go. So if you go to support and go to resources, and I'll share that link right now, you can get all the plugins and um, all the plugins, all the mat caps, alphas, textures, all right here. There are a ton of them. So, and also too, like, yeah, there's just a ton. You got fabric, flooring, food, skin textures, and then you have a bunch of alphas right here. So yeah, you could go through and, and download a lot of this stuff. And actually, let me just show you how that works. So let's go ahead and say for skin, for skin alphas, I'm really liking, oh, this this might be really, really cool right here. This alien skin pack right there. So just go ahead and download that. That usually downloads to your, to your downloads, but wherever you have that. And then let's go ahead and open that up. So we're gonna open up a folder, go to downloads, and then we're gonna go ahead and find that. Let's just extract that here. Cool, there it's, it shows up as a PSD file. Now, if I want that alpha, I'm going to go ahead and choose a standard brush. I'm going to go to alpha and import. I'm going to go to my downloads, and there is the PSD. Open it up. Boom. I'm going to set this to drag rec. And let's actually turn on another layer. And now I can start applying this as an alpha. Be like, yep, that's what I like. That's looking pretty cool. So yeah, you could do a lot of that stuff here and you could set all this up however you want. Actually, this might be kind of cool in some spots. Let's actually turn on our RGB. Let's drop the intensity down. Let's drop the intensity down and do it as a cut. Ooh, that could be pretty cool. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it as an ad. I think it looks better as that. Actually, you know what we could do? Let's turn off RGB just for a second. I want to see what this looks like here. I'm just going to go ahead and, yeah, I'll fake that for a second. I'm going to go to masking. We can actually, under masking, we can mask by cavity. 
control H and then take a paintbrush. Oh yeah. So yeah, you could do stuff like that, which is pretty cool. So hopefully that's helpful. But yeah. Hey, what's up, Yugi? Far fewer tools back then, but we're all blown away when it first came out. Absolutely. Sophia, hello. Um, I actually, so I render my sculpts in a few programs. I render in ZBrush usually as a test. I would like to see how it's uh, how it's showing up. And I do like to showcase ZBrush renders. Um, and then I've used Keyshot, I'm using Redshift currently. Um, and then I've used other programs as well, like Marmoset, Blender, etc. Um, ideally the, um, and Unreal Engine as well. I've used pretty much everything. And honestly, like, you know, ZBrush renders, what's really cool about a ZBrush render is you can have a bunch of, uh, you can have a bunch of um, VPRs and you can get some really cool effects. In fact, um, we had a stream a little while ago with Dan Etter. Um, and if you haven't checked that out, you should definitely check that out because he actually showcases how he gets a kind of cell shade look in ZBrush. But also too, ZBrush comes shipped with a lot of that stuff here. If you would like to render out something, we have our NPR right here. We also have filters and render sets, tons of filters. I think this shipped with 2019, version 2019. If not 2020 for sure. I think 2019 was it. But we have a bunch of presets that you can go ahead and turn these on, turn on this filter, double click it, and then hit render. And then you can get you can get a really neat effect really really quickly. So there's a lot of exploration that can happen here within ZBrush. And then if you are like, yeah, that doesn't work for me, go back to my default. Just double click that, and it updates real fast. So lots of really neat stuff to do. Hey, greetings, Columbia. Yeah. Yo. Oh yeah. Mass by cavity. Morning. Mass by cavity, mass by alpha. <laughs> you can you can do a lot. Mass by AO, cavity, depth, normals, color, alpha. All sorts of really, really cool stuff. There's just so much to do. And if you guys have questions as well, and you have Twitter, or you're watching an Ask ZBrush on YouTube, ask your question, and then it goes to our it goes to our team, and then what we do is we take a look at it, and if if it's something that we haven't created a video on, or um, or it's you know, if it's something we haven't created a video on, and it is possible, then we we ultimately make a video for it. So, because you know we can't we can't track everything, so it helps us for you, the user base, to ask those questions. So if you go to our YouTube or you go to Twitter and like at us, hashtags uh, Ask ZBrush, that helps out a lot too. And if you're wondering, I'm on that team. <laughs> so I help make those videos. Try to make it as easy and seamless as possible. Hey, Carbon, four, 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 what's happening? Hey, what's up, Travis? Oh yeah, that mass by cavity, dude, dude, dude. Exactly, yeah. And I'm not exaggerating when I say our Ask ZBrush video series has been running so long that there is over 500 videos. N not even kidding. So, guarantee if you have a question, there is a very high chance that we actually have already covered a video on it. But if not, then again, yeah, just ask that question. That's the thing. I mean, you know, trying to just bring awareness to it so it helps out the community more. It looks awesome with a filter. <laughs> How can it be? 
How can it be rendered with filter? So if you get that filter that you really, really like, so shift R is the render. So if you really like that filter, so let's go back. So if you go to, which one was it? I think it was, yeah, let's just, let's just do that one for demonstration. So you have this guy right here. Let's go ahead and show up everything. So you hit shift R. Okay, you're rendered. So now how do you save this out? You can save this out a couple ways. You can go to document and you can go to, um, nope, not save as, you can go to document and export. And then you could save it as a JPEG, Photoshop file, PNG, bitmap, or TIFF. As let's say we do PNG, uh, JPEG, then you can basically select your crop however you want. You can select your quality, et cetera, et cetera. So say something like that, set it up, and then go ahead and just press OK, and that sends out where that is. That's one way. Um, the other way to do it is the Z plugin. If you have Photoshop, we have a Photoshop, uh, we have a Photoshop app uh, plugin, ZBrush of Photoshop. You go ahead and set up all the things that you would like to send over. And then when you hit send to Photoshop, it will send it to Photoshop. It launches it the whole nine yards. If you would like to do some sort of turn, you can go to movie, come up at the top here. I'm going to populate that on the side. And you can actually go ahead and say, oh, here's a turntable. Click turn. And what it's going to do, it's going to apply that filter to the render. So it's going ahead and it's rendering that out for you. And I'm going to hit escape just to, sh to speed it up. But once that's done, right, you hit H here, which is high quality. You don't have to, but if you want to. And then you go ahead and actually export that out. Say where you would like it to be. Say save, and it will export out that movie for you. Um, you can also do if you are like if you're working in a professional setting and you are trying to get um, basically a turn layout for uh, for your boss. You're like, hey, like my bo like boss is like, hey, I want to see this character on all four sides: front side view, back view, etc. Then the best way to do that is actually to go to document, see app link, and there's a make character sheet here. Okay, and this works directly with Photoshop. So I can say this is my front view. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to the side, reframe that to the center by hitting F a couple times. F once zooms in uh, and full frames the the uh, subtool selected. Hitting F again full frames everything that's visible. Go ahead and say this is going to be, he's looking to the left. So that's my left. So I'm going to go ahead and hit make character sheet. And that's going to go ahead and propagate that out. And then it's going to launch Photoshop. And then it's going to go ahead and make that turn sheet. Let's give that a second. <laughs> and there you go. So now you have a turn here and it's actually masked off for you. So this is a transparent background now, right? So I can go ahead and grab this right here, control, and I can move this around. It's my transparent background. And then I can send this to whoever, whenever, however, who needs to look at it. And they can go ahead and they can uh, they could do a draw over or look at my model and make sure that it is matching up with the original concept or design that was given. And that's how you would send that out. So lots of different ways to render out something in, uh, in ZBrush. So hopefully that helps. Go ahead and we'll hit delete on that quote recorded saved uh, video because we only did like a second. And I'm gonna go back and make sure that I'm set to the default. So many have, uh, uh, so many of them have saved uh, me during project. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I saw your Darth Grogu and it's really awesome. Hey, thanks, hold my pen. Yeah. And the best, the best part too is, um, if you want to, let me, let me here. I'll, <laughs> I'm on a render tangent, tangent. Let's do a render tangent. So I wanna, I wanna show you guys BPR filters real quick, and then we'll get into doing some other stuff. So BPR filters. Um, that's actually what I really love about ZBrush renders is because it's super creative. So let's say you want to create a new render from scratch and I kind of wanted to spotlight my character. So if you hit, sh let's go ahead and do this. Let's first set up some lights. So I'm going to go ahead and pop a light just slightly above him. Um, and then, oh, let's see, what does the below look? Oh, below looks pretty cool. It's kind of that creepy, freaky, freaky. I'm gonna turn this light on. So with lights, let's populate this over here. So with lights, if we go ahead and look, it's defaulted with one turned on. And if you have 
any one of our standard materials, not our matte caps, because matte caps have lights baked into them. Our standard materials lights work in conjunction with that. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, when it's lit up like this, that means it's on. When it's not, it's off. And you can actually move it around by grabbing this little dot. And then if you click it one time, that'll actually send it to the back. So then you can have like a rim light. If you hit it again, it'll go to the front. So I'm actually gonna kind of push something in like this. I'm gonna turn that off, select the other light and then turn it on. And I'm gonna send this to the back and increase the intensity to give me kind of a rim light effect happening. Let's do something like this, really push it. And this backlight, because it's a rim light, we can really push that up and really make it pop. Turn this back on and now we have our scene lights happening. If I hit Shift R now, our lighting and material is gonna start really showing up. But as you can see here, we have really harsh shadows. So we can change that by going to render and we're gonna click this and drag this to the side here. And let's just minimize the light for a second. And now what we can do is we can go to BPR shadow and let's actually set the G strength to like 0.65. It's gonna make it somewhat softer. And the F strength, I'm gonna turn that down to 0.85, which will also make it slightly soft. Softer. So you have F strength and G strength. And then with the angle, I'm gonna change this to like 30 degrees, which is gonna feel a little bit more natural. Hit Shift R again to reset the render. And now we have much softer, more dynamic shadows that are happening. And from here, now we can go to BPR filters. And if you're familiar with Photoshop filters or Photoshop layers, it's kind of the same thing. We have a little, we have uh, 12 different filters that you can utilize. They're all closed, this little dot thing. So if I open this up, that turns on that filter. Dot turns it off, close dot, close that turns it off, open dot is on. And then one of the things I like to do is this radial overlay. And if we have a floor turned on, as you can see here, it kind of looks funky as it is, but if we turn the floor on and then re-render it with radial overlay on, it's now going to push my model into the foreground because it's just highlighting the model itself. And we can use modifiers to actually adjust the fall off, the positioning, all of this good stuff. We could just play around with this and really have something look kind of dynamic. And then from here, I'm actually going to open up the F3, which is default to sharpen. It's just gonna make it a little bit more crispy. And then F4, we have Orton. If we turn this on, it's actually going to make the sculpt a little bit more bright overall. So you can already see just with a couple filters how fast you can get something going. <laughs> I actually have something in the works for that. That's okay. <laughs> So lots of really cool stuff. And then at any point in time, you can hit save. So if you have something you really, really like and all this is decked out and you're like, I, you spent hours building a really awesome, you know, uh, filter. Um, actually, let's come here real quick. Let's go, I'm just gonna do cavity outline or material shading. There we go. I'm gonna click a material. Maybe pick a matte cap that has something a little bit darker or a metal structure or something like that. Let's say we love this. We're like, we're totally in love with it and we never want to build this again, but we have it. Just come on up to BPR filters and hit save. And now we can save this and we can call this, you know, our, our best render settings. Boom. Go ahead and hit save. And now anytime you load up a ZBrush project, you just come here to load and you find that out and you load that back in and that will reset all of these filters for you. So you don't have to continuously do that. Um, and then, yeah, so there's just tons of stuff. <laughs> tons of good stuff you can do. Why do you get zigzag lines even with a 350 by 30? Um, let me ask you a question. Do you have the floor turned on? Because check this out. So with the floor turned on, if you render this out, Unless you're talking about like you're really zoomed in and you're talking talking more of a stepping, but there is a thing that um, I'll call out. If you have the floor turned on and you render from under the floor, where the camera is viewing underneath, you'll actually get this kind of weird anti-aliasing lines happening, um, and that's just because there's like it's just recognizing that there's a floor there. 
So you always want to make sure you're above the floor. Um, if you're talking about stepping that is happening, um, that should be solved by going up to your document size and increasing your document size before you set out and render. But even in Photoshop, right, if you zoom all the way in at some point, you're gonna get some sort of stepping because it's pixel based. So if your size is, if you are getting weird kind of zigzaggy steppy lines, increase your document size. But you said you've done that. So, no, it's just the outer lines. Okay. Um, that's a really good question. I, I would have to see an example. Uh, Kimmy, Kimmy, um, if you, if you can do me a favor, actually, if you can go to um, our Z Discord or ZBrush official Discord, um, let's see if I can get you an invite real quick. Send your image in there and at us, we could we could probably help you solve that pretty quickly. Or somebody there will be able to help. So I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this for you real quick. If you have Discord. I don't know why you would be getting those lines that way. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a couple discords that you can actually get um you can get uh some some good help with. So that's one Discord, and here's another Discord, which is mine, which you can come in. So there's two Discords you could do. Ask us, and somebody will help you solve that. Boop, boop, boop. Did I finish my Ken yet? Yes, Lee Gibson, I did finish my Ken. Um, for those of you who don't know, in my Discord, I'm actually running a little themed uh, kind of fun project where everybody in the Discord who wanted to work on a Street Fighter character is able to do so. And um, I did finish my Ken. And I'm actually, I have it already keyed. I just have to get it printed and I'm waiting for my printer to come in so that I can do that. But yeah, okay. Boo, boo, boo. Hopefully that was, <laughs> that was a helpful little rant. I always like going on those. Let's continue on going. Uh, what are we at? We're at one. We have one more hour to go. Yes. <laughs> Your ball rug was finished a while ago. I was going to do more, but nah, I'll post them. Nice, nice. Yeah, it, it's going until, uh, it goes until... Goes until August for that, by the way. Okay, real quickly, what we're going to do here is we're going to drop our subdivisions on this guy right here. So we have all these tentacles, and I'm going to actually make some UVs on him. So... I'm going to hit auto groups one more time to make sure everything is in its own auto group. I'm going to drop it to its lowest subdivision level. I'm going to go to Z plugin. I'm going to go to UV master. I'm going to turn off symmetry because there's no way that this model is symmetrical. Just it's impossible. Um, I can either do work on clone or drop it to its lowest subdivision level and just hit unwrap and give that a second. Cool. And that's going to open up some options for me to do let's actually go here real quick and load up an alpha which i have right here Hey, not a problem. That's actually, I, I love doing it. I love sharing the knowledge as best I can. So glad I can help out. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to go ahead and you was thinking about masking for this alpha, but I don't know if I actually want the mask intensity. Yeah, that should be pretty cool. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually bring this up. I'm going to make a scattered brush with some interesting effects with Alpha 22. Actually, let's do Alpha... Let's go Alpha 20... 20, not 21. And then I'm going to go with brush, and I'm going to go with back face turned on. And I'm going to turn off the mask. And now we're going to start doing some 
interesting little texture bits here. Although that's kind of splicing it, so let's just clear that mask. Actually, you know what? Uh, let's actually use a different brush. What I'm going to be using for this brush is actually... Yeah, that's fine. We're going to use the uh, Form Soft brush. Because what that does is it gives it kind of a nice little puff. little puffy puff. And then go back to here. Alpha 20. Ian, Alpha 20. There we go. There we go. There we go. And let's make sure I have that back face turned back on because we don't want to be pushing too much. I'm gonna get a base texture down. These tentacles, I'm not really like trying to be super perfect with the texturing. I just wanted to kind of read kind of funky, grungy little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of do a base spray and then we'll use the alpha that we downloaded in the scatter form to maybe get a little bit more of a kind of weird textury thing. Give us some, something alien-like. Since these creatures are basically from another world, they're alien. Hey, Polo, how you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. Doing well. We're at, we're at the fun part of sculpting where you just get to like enhance your model with layers and layers and layers of detail. This is the part that I feel like most people really love because you could just go ham and just kind of play around a little bit and whatever you like or see, it doesn't really matter. Like you just play with something and then get it and then you're like, yeah, that's cool. I like that. I want that. Now let's actually go with that skin. Oh, yes, that is, that is nasty looking in a good way. Yes. There we go. Yeah, so we got that scatter turned on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Impossible. <laughs> I want that. Oh, yeah. And actually, I'm going to do a relax smooth. So if you hold shift and then start to smooth and let go of shift. It's called relax smooth. I'm gonna do that just for a second so I can get a kind of softer undertone and then I'm gonna go over that with this other alpha. And it's just because I think it's gonna give me a kind of a neat little effect. Yeah, see this alpha is really like pushing through really well with some grittiness. In fact, we're probably going to go over the Demogorgon kind of the same way because they have very similar texturing to them. Yeah, look at this. Oh, this is cool. And this alpha was just on our resource page, so... Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And I'm just using a big brush. Doesn't even really matter. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at it as a whole. Again, turning on our solo mode and then coming back here and looking at it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, cool. Let's actually come here to him. Actually, let's add some color to this model. I'm feeling like we, we're still working in black and white technically and it's looking weird. So let's change that. What's up, Ram? We're talking about enhanced contract brush would be nice. It would be nice to use. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, Daisuke. There we go. Let's get some color to this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, so remember we were talking about mask uh, by uh, cavity? Masking by cavity? We're going to do just that. We're going to go to cavity. We can even do depth. So we have a few different options. I'm going to use cavity. I'm going to use cavity with a slight, it's defaults at blur two, but we're going to use blur three. And I'm going to take the intensity and I'm going to drop that down to like 85%. It's just like a starting base, maybe, maybe seven, just go 80. It doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to slow this out 
Now, these tentacle things are kind of like bluish black ish purpley colors with like red accents. Um, and the red is usually coming from the world around it, right? So we're going to do something very similar. So we're going to mask by here. So we're going to go mask by cavity. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and. Con whoa, 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 whoa. Whoops. I hit a button. Hold on. I saved it. Good job. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Control H. Thank you. Hitting random buttons. That's what I do. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with a deep purple. Pushing towards black. But you don't want. You don't want to go true black. True black means you won't have any real shadow works available to it. And this, the, the material I'm working with has a blue hue to it. So I'm actually gonna turn this off into a basic standard material with no color options. White is white. And we're gonna push it towards something like this. And actually based on what these tentacle things are, Let's actually turn on MRGB, so for material and color. And this color value is 2318 blue, 13. So let's go ahead and fill that like such. I'm going to invert that. And then I'm going to actually make this kind of more of a darker red. Like that. To get something that looks a lot like this. Now, this guy right here, this little guy, I actually had already painted him. So I'm gonna turn that color on. That was actually painted a little while ago. We're just gonna like make it gritty. And then for the ground, let's do a base color of kind of brown ish, kind of a brownish red. And let's go to RGB. And we can actually go back here to our startup color if we want. Now, see, that's too blue. So let's actually go back to our base color here and go a little darker. Something like that. I like to start with dark colors. And then from there, I can always add in highlights and accents and stuff like that. For this base here, I will go through black because the base itself is just kind of indifferent. It's just something to stand on. It's not the focal point, everything else will be. And now for the steel beams and the crate, honestly, I don't know if I'm in love with this, but I sculpted it and it's staying there until I figure out what I want to actually do with that. <laughs> I'm gonna go with kind of a bluish gray. Okay, and let's come back here to this guy right there. So we got our base colors. I switch back to a material that makes sense. And we can play with this option. Um, actually, it was fairly easy to put it in position. I kept pushing it. Um, I'll show you how I did that. But actually, um, let me load up uh, the live stream in which I did it on. So that way you can actually Am I in a playlist? That way you can actually see it if you would like to see it in real time. It was fairly simple. Um, I just used transpose and then I ultimately just kind of stood uh, in the position myself. And then just from there was like, yeah, this uh, this feels right. Let me see, was this, the, is this where I posed it? Let me see here real quick. Is this, nope, this one is not it. Let me go back which means it was a little bit beyond that. There it is, this one. Yeah, this is the one. Yes, this is the one. So if you want to see me pose this, I did that a little while ago. Of course. Perfect, and then let's paste that right there. So you can watch that there. How to turn off the freaking autosave completely. Okay, so in order to turn off autosave, you go to preferences, come on down to quick save. And then I have this, so there's no like off, off button. But what you do is, so this is saving in minutes. So 
slide everything up to 600. Um, and then from there, rest duration, all the way up to 600. Just set it all the way up there. Um, and then you can even turn off optimize, um, which is that's optimizing the file size, which I personally recommend. Um, and the other thing too, max file, quick save files. If you drop this down to one, and then that's it. It's only gonna save one. It can't save any more than that. Um, I have that set all the way up to a thousand. I don't mind the quick saves happening every once in a while, but 600 minutes, it's almost impossible to hit. Um, as you can, sometimes it will push a quick save um, all the way through, or you can come up to the top here and just click quick save. Um, the other thing too, is that if you do have quick saves turned on, hit delete quick save files and say yes. What that'll do is that if you have a bunch of quick saves, it's gonna take up a lot of space on your hard drive. And the idea of that is basically you always have something to fall back on, but a lot of times it's saving project files and those project files can get very big, especially if you have a lot. So deleting that from time to time, you just have to go to preferences, delete quick saves. It will find the folder in which it saves its quick saves and wipe those for you. And that will optimize your hard drive and your performance. So those are other ways to do that. Um, especially if you are noticing that your quick saves are causing crashes. If that is the case, then then yeah, that's a, that's a good way to do it. What time is it? Because I've ranted for a while. It's 1.15, okay. Yep. Okay, let's do a couple things. I do want to get the, the at least some like gritty saliva stuff happening. Um, but as you can see here, I've already started the color process. I'm going to be continuing this off stream because we're almost done with this piece. But ideally, I'm, what I was doing with him, I'm going to be doing it throughout the whole piece. I'm also going to be adding in accents and stuff like that. So there's a lot of little stuff that I will be doing. Um, let's go back to this beam for a second because I forgot to turn on the material. And I had it set to a metal material. Let's go here, color save, go fill objects. Object. No object, there we go. Now we can switch back. M, 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 M. There we go, now let's go back. Okay, perfect. That's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and save this real quick. Perfect. If I get Zebra's Core Mini, can I subdivide the same way I could in the full version? No. Um, in Zebra's Core Mini, Zebra's Core Mini is our free program that basically like gets you started within Zebra's Fast. So um, you can't subdivide, but what you can do if you want to get a lot of detail within your model, all you really need to do in Zebra's Core Mini is take your, I believe it's your smooth brush and set the intensity all the way down to like zero or one, and then just smooth over a surface you want to sculpt on and that will tessellate and rebuild that geometry so then what you can do is at the top you have presets that have uh, low resolution medium resolution and high resolution so what you do to preserve the sculpt is run one of those those uh, processes something like 300,000 run that and that retessellates and rebuilds the whole mesh and then after that you take your smooth brush and set it down all the way to the basic like level one intensity and the area that you're going to be um you're going to be sculpting and adding detail smooth that section out okay and see where that is with a wireframe on and then sculpt in that area and that will help uh hold and preserve details so then when you're ready to move on to another part you actually just do that again you retestulate you hit one of the things and then you smooth the section and with this smooth down to like zero or one i, I can't remember if it goes to one or zero but all the way down, it's not going to hurt your mesh at all. And you just add that on. So that's um, that's absolutely the way to do it. So, okay. Uh, saliva, let's go. <laughs> and you just watched me reset my brain. <laughs> Okay, saliva time. So I wanted to try something that was really, really cool. Hey, not a problem. Um, so let's try something really neat. So we're going to go to um, visible set number two. And actually, we're going to go to visible set. Yeah, let's go to visible set number two. 
And let's, we have fingernails turned on. We have the elbow bone. And, okay, great. Yes, there we go. Okay. So we just need him. And what we need to do is basically, we're going to take a, uh, a plain 3D and we're going to stretch it over his face. And then we're going to end up using masking to create new polygroups. We're going to delete those polygroups and we're going to rebuild the mesh so that it's really gritty. And then we're going to move it in position. So let's go ahead and let's go all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to append a plain 3D. I'm going to bring this up and nope. Grab, select that. Let's move this up. There we go. Okay, we're going to go kind of a clear material. I'm going to put this in a, a folder. We'll call this uh, I can't spell today. Oh my gosh. Saliva. Okay. Let's go ahead and save this one more time. Now we're going to be using uh, we're going to be using cloth dynamics. So we're going to push this up. Boop. Let's turn off our let's turn off our perspective. Scale this up. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn on um, display properties double so that I can see exactly where it's going to be over. Okay. And he's kind of facing up, so we're going to have it coming in this direction, like this. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Now, let's open up a couple options here. More specifically, we're going to be opening up Dynamics. So let's come over here. Let's populate that on. And we're going to turn off gravity. We don't need gravity for this. We have full control over what we're going to be doing. And this mesh should be enough. Uh, very often... Question time. Very often when I use knife brush, zebra shuts down. Any idea what can cause that? Maybe only 16 gigagrams on it? Absolutely not. Actually, what more likely is happening is the knife curve brush is running into inverted mesh or mesh that is um, kind of colliding and not super optimized. So if you're using it with DynaMesh or you're using it with um, any mesh that you've kind of pulled into itself, the more the mesh folds over, the more that brush has to calculate. So what I recommend doing is kind of optimizing your mesh a little bit and just kind of running an, uh, the dynamus process again or just kind of cleaning up how it's colliding. If two normals are really close to each other and they're kind of pushing beyond, that might that will cause the brush to kind of freak out a little bit. So I would see where you are cutting, try to optimize that mesh as best as you can because the whole idea of it is it's cutting and then it's cutting a hole and then from there, it has to rebuild that hole. And if the normals are facing weirdly or they're colliding or you have gaps in the mesh, it's now trying to calculate how to rebuild that process so that it stitches the mesh on. And a lot of times that could cause it to kind of freak out. And when it does that, it can shut down. So I would say kind of look at your mesh and keep it as clean as possible. Or if it's dynamesh, just re-dynamesh it so that it welds it all together and then cut it. And that should help out a well. lot. Yeah, save before you start cutting. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, with our transpose, our gizmo transpose, we're actually gonna go BT and use transpose cloth. Transpose cloth is gonna work like the, the gravity within dyna, uh, dynamics, but it's going to um, actually have us control it. So we're not gonna hit run simulation. We're just gonna make sure that collision volume is turned on. So we're going to go with our inflates and we're going to pick this at like 0.2, something really low. And then we're going to recalculate that with collision. Okay. Now, when we use the cloth transpose, you can see here, I'm actually able to have this kind of interact. But as you can see here, it is kind of pushing through because there's not a whole lot of uh, edge loops or vertices to really um, kind of see all that information so we're going to we're going to subdivide it up just a little bit i'm also going to add in a couple more things to the scene so let's take this here i'm actually going to subdivide up once and then delete lower so that it's a little bit more tighter because it needs all of these points each point is the interaction part and then we're going to go ahead and recalculate this one more time and now i can kind of push through 
Now, if we want to, we don't have to, if we want to, we can turn on gravity as something really low. And here, I'm actually going to set the gravity because we've changed its direction because gravity is always facing to the floor. And then if we go ahead and hit run simulation, let's let that kind of go over itself and let's see what we get. ML Creative, what's happening? Thank you, thank you. I always appreciate it, man. I always appreciate it. Okay, we're going to tap there and kind of speed this up a little bit. And I end up stretching this a bit more. We're going to use the move brush a little bit. Just covered his face. You know, we don't care. Kind of figuring that part out like such. So what's cool about this is now let's go ahead and reset the direction of gravity and let's go ahead and run that one more time. Okay. Very cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to kind of draw out our shapes with masking. So we can actually turn off collision volume. And then from here, we can actually kind of start coming through, let's say with our mass lasso. Let's actually subdivide up a little bit more. <laughs> that is that's fair that's fair yeah what we're going to be doing essentially is just kind of letting some of the areas that are coming out naturally we're going to kind of create uh new new little spots of uh poly groups that then we can use for our quote our quote slime because it kind of falls we can just kind of quickly map out what we would like to we can also use some parts like we can have this as this part stretching down like this part could easily um this part could easily become something that connects to like his chest or a little bit of drool it's more of like how do we get the the how do we get the most amount of strands possible? So when we I'm using the masking I'm using un, the like I'm unmasking the areas I want and masking the areas I don't want. This part right here, yeah, we could do that. And this part could actually like come down and be attached to his uh, his arm or something like that, or just be really droopy. So we could we could figure that part out. The other way the the other way that I have done it before, I call it the long way. It's literally just taking a spear and then using. Uh, you know, you're utilizing like snake hook or something to get what you want, but I got to do that with every sphere. So this way I can kind of pre-draw how I want that to look and maybe get something that's a little bit more to my liking. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, so, you know, got to figure it out. We can actually hit solo for a second. So, yeah, 
Yeah, let's do something like that. there. I could see the shape, which is pretty cool. I can even sharpen that if I wanted to. Actually, I don't like this one much at all. This one over here, what's happening there? So let's go ahead and do that. This way now, what's really neat is I can, again, I could just kind of see what's happening. So, exploring my shapes through mapping. And let's, let's see what that looks like so far. So I'm actually going to go ahead and hit Control T and timestamp this just so I can pop back at any point. I'm going to hit Control W, which will give me a new mask. Now, if I select these guys here, I have something that's separated. I don't like this one. Let's get rid of that guy for now. That might work. See if that, we'll see if that works. So what we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean this up a bit. So we can do it a few ways, but the way I like to do it is actually with a brush. So I'm gonna go up to brush and I'm gonna go to smooth. And we're gonna go smooth groups, hold shift. Now I can come through and kind of smooth these areas out doesn't rebuild it, it just helps keep it tidy. Force those areas together and then we can Z remesh with these shapes in mind. Now you probably could go to information and smooth by groups, but I like to do it by hand. It's just more of like a thing I like to do. Um, sure, let's just, I don't know why that one's there, but we've already started, so. Be the long one. There we go. Clean that up a bit. Now this obviously isn't the final look, but this is this is just the step I'm taking to get there. So I am <laughs> pretty much every. If you look up IR sculpts. Uh, on anything, that's where you can. That's where you can find me. Just literally, you can probably just Google it. But I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, Discord. I'm, I am everywhere, sir. Art station. Uh, I'll share. I'll share a link here in a second. Okay, we got this guy right here. I'm actually going to rebuild this. I'm gonna rebuild this. Uh, while it's still together with the groups the way they are. I'm not going to delete hidden or anything just yet because I want the other mesh to help me build the surface I want. So we're going to go to uh, geometry. We're going to go to crease and I'm going to crease by poly groups. Okay, I'm going to subdivide up a couple times, delete lower so I have just a little bit more mesh to work with. I'm going to go to zebra mesher. I'm going to keep groups and keep creases. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start with a target of, let's start with 15 and let's go ahead and zero mesh that. Let that think for a second. <laughs> I have not saved. <laughs> That's weird. <pretty. laughs> we are not using the knife brush though. There we go. Okay. 
That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Definitely introduce some interesting. I want to go. I want to go. What do I want to do? That is not too bad, actually. I was I was actually wondering if that was going to be too low, but I actually might be okay. We can target back up to 20 just for the peace of mind. Uh, anyway, the link I dropped, you could find my stuff there and then from there. Actually, you know what? Let's go back. Um, I'm going to go to smooth groups and turn that down to zero. Let's try that again. It's too low, which is almost not heard of. <laughs> All right, let it think. Let it do its thing. I'll have some coffee. But yeah, the link I just dropped right now, you can you can find me there. There's also a link tree where you can see my other stuff if you'd like to take a look at my artwork. Without spoilers, has everybody caught up with Stranger Things? Ooh, look at that. There we go. All right, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's... That is better. I like that. Okay. Now. Okay, cool. Let's actually go ahead and let's turn on display and up oh, double is turned on. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's nothing floating that we don't want it to float. Okay. All right. I think that might work out. So let's go ahead and delete hidden. So that's actually located under geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden. You are a great season, despite exactly what everyone has complained about. Yeah, exactly. Hey, witch cat, what's happening? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, the effect is pretty cool, right? I'd like to think so. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree. Overall, I like it. Uh, I, I really, I really think there's gonna be some, <clears throat> some questions to be answered. Hey, it's Ender Uh There's definitely they got to answer some questions, but uh, overall, I like it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I just love the show. I'm, I'm that guy. I love the show. So I'm masking off the top portion because we're going to be still running a dynamic stretch here, and I'm actually going to be. gonna invert this we're gonna turn on on mask self collision we'll turn that up a little bit and we'll go ahead and turn on collision volume now let's go ahead and run simulator let this kind of settle a little bit hmm, actually let's invert that go to on brush Calculate. Nope. Not mass. There we go. Play with a couple settings. Let's see if we find something that we really like. Okay. Let's go back here. And even, let's even, let's do this. Let's actually take the top portion. Stretch that down a little bit. Okay, let's actually now we're gonna go to dynamic subdiv. We're gonna turn on dynamic and we're gonna apply a thickness. And now we can sculpt these segments the way we want. I'm actually gonna apply a pretty thick, uh, a pretty thick thickness. A pretty thick, thick thickness. Hey, what's up, Dennis Love? If I didn't say hi, I feel like I did not. But now we can work with just the one mesh.
This will take a little bit of TLC, but we could do it. Let's actually turn on. Smooth groups, that's why. So let's go to smooth. And we're going to go to smooth cloth now. What smooth cloth will do is let us pinch in these areas a little bit. So we have this thickness turned on. The smooth cloth, we can actually smooth edges. So now we can smooth the edge shape a little bit. So we're not just trying to shove that shape in. We can actually get that kind of effect happening here. Never seen it, but hear good things. Yeah, it's, it's overall, I would say it's a great show. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very uh, loaded with Easter eggs from pop culture to D and D. So there's, there's, there's something for everyone, as they say. the shapes that we want. We get something a little bit like this. Now we're going to be working this a little bit more, but starting to see it all kind of come to fruition. Now what I am going to do is I'm not going to hold on to this geometry because it's a flat plane, and that flat plane is always going to look flat. It's not going to look rounded or any other way that I would like it to be. So I'm actually going to apply the subdivision. Okay. Actually, before we do that, we can turn smooth groups up to two. And then our segments. Yeah. Should be fine. Yeah. Perfect. Let's just go ahead and apply that real quick. And I'm actually going to subdivide a couple more times, delete lower. And then what I'm going to do is actually auto groups. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and dynamesh it. Because then I'm going, to, I'm going to want to round this out just a little bit. And I can do it with smooth pretty quickly. So ideally, we just use the plain 3D to get kind of a base shape to work with. The rest I will be sculpting it in. So I'm going to hold the picker and find the resolution that it currently resides in, which is about 700. And then I'm going to Dynamesh that. Now we can smooth some of this through. I will rebuild this with the proper thickness once I smooth this out with Zebra Mesher. So then I can use Dynamics again if I would like to finish stretching it. But getting the shape the way it is, kind of digging it. I also got to consider, am I going to 3D print this? And if I am going to 3D print this, I need to apply some thickness. That's where inflate's going to come in really handy. As I currently, as I use it right then in there. Build that surface real fast. Let's actually solve this out. My process, I typically fall on the sword of just adding some sculptural detail. I don't usually go with super procedural methods. I'm like, eh, I'll sculpt the rest of it. Something. I wonder if I will 3D print this or not. I'm more thinking out loud now. <laughs> kind of exaggerating these shapes still. We haven't moved into the final phase. What time is this? 43? Okay. So we're going to go ahead now, turn off Dynamesh. Let's go back to Zebra Mesher. And let's auto group it one more time. 
and let's start at 20 and let's go from there. Uh, I only speak English, but I can Google Translate. Hopefully, it's close enough. Um, Cause I don't like it. I don't like comments not being answered. So I'll try my best to answer the question in English. Hopefully, that's as well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I take it. Yeah, transparent resin would be super cool. You know, you know exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> that would be super cool. Okay. What we can do for material purposes, we can use the reflected material here as well. So you go color fill that object with a reflected material. Because ideally, if we turn everything else on here, now, of course, it still needs refinements, but that's how I start the process. Um, what we could do here is go to display properties, BPR settings, and turn on transparent shading. Say yes, which is going to set it up here in the render. That's all it's happening under render properties. It's going to turn on transparent. If you say no, this won't be turned on, and then you won't get the effect you're looking for. Then with your visibility, we could turn up shadows and drop visibility. So when we quote render, we start getting kind of a transparent look and you could play with this and get as much as you would like with it. So, and then if you turn it off, then now eh, there's still something going through there, but that is one way to do it. You can also, if you want to go for slimy more than transparent, that's where toy plastic really comes into play. And toy plastic probably will be what I stick with for for a good chunk of it. But just ideas and thoughts and things. Woo, do not hit dynamic with that. Okay. Now I'm going to use the snake hook. I'm going to turn off RGB. Snake hook and inflate. Those are going to be the two big ones. Because with the snake hook, yeah, I can hold alt and start dragging this up. Play around a bit with this. Should also turn on topological. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. With this, we could still, we could still kind of get a little bit of a uh, of a look we can isolate like maybe one of them let's actually bring this up here so this is transparent cloth so BT and then let's go transpose this might be a little too long but we could start attaching it to the body a little bit too Add that inflate in. Brush. Kind of just start playing with it. Get that kind of weird stretchy effect. Jump up here. Kind of rotate that in. Definitely going to play a little bit more with this. Fine, refine. What we got? We got a couple more minutes. If anybody has any final questions too, um, I go until two, so I'll be able to answer that as best as possible. So just let me know. Let me know. that down a little bit more also too with the snake hook by the way if you are on a surface and you wanted to trail a surface hold alt and it will trail the surface of a visible sub tool you have so that's a really good way to get something kind of following along 
that you don't feel like you're just kind of stuck. You know what I mean? If you want that to kind of wrap around here, you don't have to manually try to get it. Just hold Alt and it'll stick to, especially if you want to like pull stuff out like this. You can do that. So hold Alt, that's a good way to do it. Especially having things come to a point. I hold Alt a lot. I'm using the snake hook a lot. Does that make me? <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna answer that. I'm not gonna answer that question. <laughs> I, I I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh. All right. All right. Let's kind of push that in a little bit. So you can see here, we ideally we we spent some decent time getting some shapes. Now we're just gonna explore these shapes. And I'm going to do that process a few more times to get other aspects of things I want. So, you know, just another way to do something. The cool thing about drips. The other thing we want to do too, if you guys want to get like blood, blood spatter or any type of like slime ish if you hold the control button to bring up your masking options we do have a mesh splat and that kind of helps generate a little bit of nice splatty kind of weird effect so if you want something that's going to be on the creature itself you know and then your brush size affects the density level of that so you can get some really cool effects with that as well. I didn't do that here for the outside, but I actually might end up doing that here for the inside to just get a little bit more uh, nastiness in, be in between the teeth here. So you can get something like that. But for right now, I really want to get this, this thing refined a bit, and then I'll probably take that approach towards the end. little drippy drip right there smoothing that out so we don't have any hard edges that's what will make it look weird the other thing too if you want some parts to come to a point that's where our good old Aki curve comes into play. So brush, curve, Aki curve, and we can drag things out to, to be a little bit more of a point. So you can get just a little bit more. Just a little extra layering there. There we go. That. Let's turn off Aki Curve real fast.
Honestly, this one might be just a little too long. I don't know if I'm liking that. So we'll skinny that up a bit. And I'm gonna smooth that down. What we got? What do we got? What do we got? We got just a couple minutes left. Okay, snake hook. Hello, hello. Uh, let me use Google Translate real quick. I only speak English, so I do. Uh, I do like to see if I can get other comments happening here. GV Predator, uh, Demigorgon, Stranger Things. Oh, UD Predator. Thanks. Got to go now. Uh, love your live stream. Keep up the great work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No worries, no worries. Thanks for being here. Super appreciate it. We're gonna be going in a couple minutes as well. Just want to finish this last thought. And then, I'll, like I said, I'm going to refine this a little bit more um, and continue the process afterwards. But this is kind of the idea of it. So just needs a lot of refinement. But this is a good starting point, I think. Hold Alt. There we go. Where is this? Yeah, it's coming here. Just push this in. This part right there just got a little. Soften that. Gizmo, let's push that in and up just a bit. I never can tell if you guys can hear the music, but the song is crazy. Do I ever use Sculptors Pro as part of my workflow? Uh, not really. Um, not really. I don't so much. From time to time, I have, but I would I would say in the majority of the time, no. Um, so much easier than modeling is the model. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Come on, there we go. Yeah, and you can just get those multiple strands happening at that time, so then. You can get a few, you can work a little bit faster than one at a time. I said the way I used to do this is I would take a spear and then I would use this extender or or stretch it and then try to make it work and then try to make gravity work for me. And that was always a little bizarre. Here, it's a little bit easier to get some shapes that come in. Uh, still just still getting a bunch of stuff happening all at once. Let's do something real quick. I do want to recalculate this. Let's set this deflate process to zero. No floor collision. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mask the bottom part of most of this. So I want to try to just get the shape I need real fast. Soften, 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 soften. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate. And let's try to just have this bit stretch a little bit more. He's drooping right here on his arm. Let's actually unmask that one. Thank you, thank you. Learn a lot. We going to uh, probably see you next Wednesday. Yep, every Wednesday. Every Wednesday from noon to 2 Pacific Standard Time, I am here. There we go. All right, guys. That is going to be it for the day. Here is where the piece looks like in its entirety so far. So let's go to VSAT 1. Just turn it all on. So this is about where we are. I'm still going to be doing a lot more to it during the week, but I'll be sharing progresses. So if you do uh, actually... Um, you do actually uh, follow me on my uh, Instagram and stuff like that then you'll see updates um, in fact here is let me just copy this real fast so you can see all that other good stuff oh cool is that a, is that a good good one Darren <laughs> is, is that good that's really the question I guess I should be asking that was a super long link. I didn't mean to share that craziness. Here's a much shorter one. 
Anyway, guys, so that's going to cover it for me. My name is Ian Robinson. I work at Maxon. I am a ZBrush trainer, and I teach ZBrush for a living. And I love coming and hanging out with you guys every single day. So, well, not every single day. Every Wednesday. I don't know why I said every day. Meh, that's how it is. <laughs> okay, cool. Make a mystery floor. Yeah, exactly. All right, that is it. I will talk to all you next Wednesday. And also, don't forget to, if you do have any questions, feel free to hashtag us at AskZBrush and we'll answer those questions the best we can. Or go to YouTube and type in AskZBrush and see what's there. There's over 500 videos of awesome stuff. So, all right, guys, that is it. I will talk to you guys later. Bye, 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 bye.